guys welcome back to my channel uh, we learn together today we are going to continue with our previous video history of city Abu Dhabi UAE in the previous video we learned about how was the city before the oil was discovered in 1958 and now in this video we'll, con we'll look towards the modernization of the city of Abu Dhabi a transition from 1958 till today how they are how they are and uh, I hope you will learn something new in this video regarding the city and history of Abu Dhabi again if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button share your feedback in comment section below and subscribe to our channel for new video uploads every day let's go By the international jets and the local runabouts, the vultures of world commerce descend on Zaid's little kingdom. They're perfectly decent vultures, just bankers and businessmen doing their job. A hundred million dollars a year is a nice piece of export market to get your hands on, especially when the place so obviously needs your help. As a banker, investment banking, investment firms to grab the opportunity to export the oil from there, extract the oil from Gulf and sell it to the companies in their respective countries. Ten years ago, when I first came to Abu Dhabi, there was only one plane a week. Now there's more than one a day, and the old place can't quite cope. We've been here before. Oh, no, there's been quite some improvement here in four years since I've been here. Uh, yeah. One plane a week to one every day. I fully uh, expect to see some floor shows when I get on into town. <laughs> With some strip tees also? <laughs> well, no, that's a little too much. <laughs> in Abu Dhabi town, at first sight, there isn't much sign of change. Shackbutt's static rule left the town nearly as squalid as it always had been. And some of these people hardly know yet what's going to hit them. Now Zaid's ready to spend his millions. The alleys are still dark and dirty. The beggars wait patiently for the faithful Muslims to do their duty as the prophet ordained and give them arms. At that time, and there were beggars and everything in, in Abu Dhabi. But in today's world, begging is illegal in all around UAE. You will not find a single beggar on the road begging for money. This is what Arabs call the souk, the bazaar or marketplace. And in Abu Dhabi, it's Bond Street and Fifth Avenue and the neighborhood supermarket all rolled into one. That time there were only one souk. Now there are many. Many gold souk. Souk means market. For the Arabs of the desert, it's got everything we mean by bright lights and the big city. It's not much of a place, but this is where 20,000 people are going to share Zaid's inheritance of 100 million a year. Some of them have got a share in it already. They've bought big cars to go bumping over the unmade tracks. Big lorries to cash in on the building boom. And they've also learned to throw them away, like all good modern men. There are four and five floor office blocks instead of shanties and concrete in the development of the development of Abu Dhabi from single story houses to multiple story houses. Instead of mud. The modern world, our world, is taking over. I remember, for instance, not long ago when there wasn't a single bank in Abu Dhabi. Now these buildings are all banks. Money in the bank means money to buy with, and the beach at Abu Dhabi is piled with purchases. 
Fascinating how money can change and bring things to you. Abu Dhabi was built on a sandbank, though it's never had a proper harbour. But that didn't matter much when there was nothing but a few dates to ship out and a few tins to ship in. Now the whole modern world is dumped into the sand. Air conditioners and deep freezers, timber and steel, cement and typewriters, fans and... Even nowadays you can find anything in the US or US, France, Europe, you'll find the same item available in the way Abu Dhabi, any complete way you can. Piling cabinets, you name it and you'll find it here, sweeping in like a tidal wave on the old Arabian shore. We call these construction machines. They're also weapons of destruction. They can rip up an old road or knock down an old house even faster than they can build new ones. And in Arabia now, they can and do tear an old way of life to shreds before a new one has properly begun. Not that many Arabs object. In fact, most of them are only too glad to help with the destruction of their old way of life. They can see the vision of a better life in a bulldozer. They want a piece of it. Someone, though, must try to strike a balance between building the new and wrecking the old. That someone is the ruler, Zaid. Zaid knows from experience that if he's too slow to destroy the old world, he may be removed like his brother Shackwood. But if he tries to build the new world too quickly, he, learn from his he may mistakes, destroy himself. What he does with sure. his brother, no one can do this with him. He took precautions and grew slowly in modernization of the Abu Dhabi. Life for Zaid has become a perpetual balancing act between the personal leadership of the past and the faceless, impersonal administration of the future. Like Shackwood, he still holds his majlis every day so that his people can meet him, greet him, talk to him and complain to him in the traditional desert way. The ritual is unchanged, the coffee is served. Time, motion and people seem as leisurely as ever. But behind the appearance of tradition, the revolution is creeping in. The majlis doesn't last all morning anymore. Zaid can only give his people an hour of his time. And even that's interrupted by the demands of the modern world. Welcome to the international businessmen. Welcome to the salesmen, to the experts, to science and high finance. Maybe welcome to the con men, too, until Zaid learns to pick them from the rest. Of course, we all sit down together. And of course, they're all equal, East and West, the world and Arabia, the courtesies of the old world, mingling with the business of the new. <laughs> But it's the newcomers in business suits who get the places of honor at Zaid's side. And not just because Arab hospitality demands they should be favored. They're there because they represent power. The power to provide the people of Abu Dhabi with anything Zaid can now afford to buy. Still, the ritual goes on balancing the new with the old. The first thing a visitor must do in Arabia is to learn patience. You can sit for hours in places like this and never do anything but ask after each other's health. All in good time, 
and all by the will of God. Never do today what you can put off till tomorrow. Never act if you can talk instead. The tribesman with a problem comes to Zai to sort it out. And everybody else must wait. Patience and still more patience. But now there's a hundred million dollars of good hard cash burning a hole in patience every year. That's business that won't wait. It may be the will of God that's given it to Abu Dhabi, but it's the will of man, and especially the will of Zai, that has to decide what to do with it now. years after the oil began to flow, Abu Dhabi got nothing but piecemeal changes. Now Zaid has come to power with a plan to make Abu Dhabi the model state of Arabia with all the paraphernalia of development. In the first few months of his rule, he awarded 70 million dollars worth of contracts and he's out every day to spur on the men who are making him a brand new kingdom. This will be going out the box in the mile and the second stage, which will be done next spring or next summer, whenever your highness decides, uh, would continue on out into the very deep water for the large freighters, the large ships. The machines that come ashore on the beach are pounding the desert into new shapes. The men who descend from the aeroplanes are drafting a new world. We are working night shifts also. Yes, day and night. It's a world where time and opportunity have changed places. Yesterday, time seemed endless and the opportunities few. Equipment from sea is coming to Abu Dhabi to reconstruct the new buildings, new roads, new highways, and the people who's coming from sky for investment, give ideas. The, city, the, the modernization of the Abu Dhabi city is in transit in the early beginning stages. Today, time is short and the opportunities are infinite. Going out for approximately a mile. Uh, which we had discussed with you in your office when Mr. Griesbach, our uh, design engineer, was here a month ago. Zaid told me once he didn't know what would happen in 10 years' time, but he felt he must give everything to his people now because they'd had nothing for so long. Schools and hospitals, wells and houses, an artificial deep water harbor to replace the Abu Dhabi beach, a four-lane highway and a water pipeline across the desert, an airport with a runway longer than London. This is just the location of it. Now, uh, you are approximately in this area here, Your Excellency, uh, Your Highness, and uh, as we're going down the road... Of course it'll change everything. Zaid told me that too. The first thing to go, he said, would be the Arab's love for his camel. But what's a camel to a VC-10? Oh, he would, he would take uh, Good care of everything very easily four thing. or five big BZ tents. Uh, of course, the smaller the DC threes would take quite a few. Uh, see, one of the difficulty things that uh, we don't know how many aircraft will be coming in here, Your Highness, and this is one of the things which uh, you yourself will have to decide is how many airlines you'll permit to come into Abu Dhabi, and this will, of course, govern the number of aircraft here at any one time. Decide. Choose. Act. Sometimes, under these new imperatives, Zaid acts pretty hastily and harshly. He dismissed this plan for a new souk in Abu Dhabi with scarcely a moment's thought. Yeah, I'm going to show detailed plans. Yeah, bigger. Yeah. 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 Yeah
لا 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 مو براضي عن هذا ولا لا 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 Take it away and start again. So two months' work is demolished in a moment. He who pays the piper calls the tune. In the courtyard of Zaid's palace, the centuries slide back again. A moment ago, Zaid was the modern oil tycoon, aloof and decisive. Now he's back in the role of Sheikh, the universal uncle to his people, the feudal lord with his followers in procession to the daily feast. To the tribesmen of the desert, used to bread and dates in the sand, Zaid's table is a revelation. It's loaded with more food than many of them have ever seen, and it really is a table, and not just the floor. The idea of a free meal for all Zaid's followers is traditional, and he rarely sits down with less than 50 men. But the forms and the food are new. Money talks here through waiters in black ties, through plates and soup spoons and a whole new ritual of table manners to master. Like the newly rich in any part of the world, the Arabs of Abu Dhabi are learning to keep up with the Joneses. Snobbery is the latest local vice. We used to eat on the floor. Now they're sitting on a table, people serving them in a bow tie, all because of the money. Fathers learn new manners. A few of their sons learn new tongues. Foreign languages and foreign teachers bring foreign ideas. That's the TV. Yes. This is the floor. Good. Here's a pencil. Good. Here's a ruler. Good. Here's a picture. Table. Good. Now, all together, stand up. Yes, that's the window. Huh. That's, that's the window. window. But the old ways are still the only ways for most of Arabia's children. Schools like this, where the boys learn the Holy Quran by heart, haven't changed in a thousand years. It's still the only sort of school most... The Quran is used to be teached on the old schools. They're on this happy set on the floor with the teacher. They learn the complete Quran by heart. Sort of school most kids ever see, if they're lucky enough to see a school at all. romance of the old Arabia was always a bit of an illusion. In reality, the place was and still is full of desperate poverty and sickness. There wasn't a single hospital in Abu Dhabi until a few years ago, and doctors were hardly ever seen. Now there's this American mission hospital, overburdened, overcrowded, forced to compromise, like everything in Arabia, between modern standards and old habits. 
as something that we have not wanted to exist, these patients being in all together. But we've been working on it. And we haven't come up with a good answer, uh, simply because we don't have enough staff to watch all the doors. We lock the front door, and they come in the back door or the side door. So we have gotten sort of used to it over the years, so that now we don't mind as much when they're all in there together. They're hard luck. They can't have the privacy of the personal examination of the doctor. The little children often have diarrheas or fever, colds, and sores, and abscesses and such to take care of. And then the local Arabs... That time they don't have treatment for that. Care of ...accidents, falling out of a palm tree or off of a camel. And this can be sort of dangerous. They fracture a limb or break a hip. And most all of the people are suffering from eye ailments of one sort or another, from the youngest child to the oldest man, with the ailment of trachoma, which is about 99% prevalent here. Many of them are suffering from tuberculosis. More and more we are detecting this disease as we go on with the x-ray. <coughs> 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 Tradition still throws a veil around the women of Arabia that even the doctor can't quite penetrate. His examinations here are probings in the dark. When you are a doctor, Akhtar, Hini, Chiwi 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 the women are the most conservative force of all, secluded, unchanging, uneducated, and fatalistic. They accept their lot meekly, and they do their duty faithfully as the handmaidens and chattels of men. But for how much longer, when even under the thorn bush, the doctor arrives with his medicine, and every jab with a syringe becomes a sort of revolution? Some of it may be still a bit like faith healing. No doctor's skill could have cured this man's tuberculosis. The most that medicine could do was to give him a sort of comfort on the way to death. But if the 20th century medicine doesn't always work, it does challenge that submission to the will of God that accepts death whenever it likes to strike. So Islam itself comes under attack. God's will always seems more flexible when you can meet it with a millionaire's money. I would be honored to present the estimates for Abu Dhabi for the year 1967. The total revenue, as estimated, is 41,202,080 dinars. For the ruler, the days are over when he had so little money that nobody cared how he spent it. Now Zaid must have a budget and a British accountant to keep the books. Development expenditure is estimated at 23,275,671 dinars. Every penny is another nail in the coffin of the old Arabia, and maybe in the life of Zaid too. Dinars. You haven't included the um, airport building here, the, the airport, terminal building. Have the airport you? building hasn't been tended for. Hasn't it. been tended no. for. But you, this goes in the lump sum, does it? That goes in the lump sum of that 10 million down here, uh -huh. yes. Yeah. One, when I said that this included all the expenditure, there are things like the police, for instance, where it's impossible to get a true estimate. We have to wait for the arrival and the, of the new people to give us these estimates. I've put in a third of a million dinars for them to give them authority to spend. Outside Zaid's office, time still seems endless and patience still comes easily. His people have given up their lives to Allah. What God wills, they still accept. But the signs of dissolution are all around them, like the leisurely old world's cast-off furniture. 
and the new office chairs that are waiting to take its place. As the officers grow, the people seem to shrink. When Zaid was simply the leader of a tribe, these men could meet him every day. Now he's the administrator of a modern state. He's forced to shut them out of his life. They can only wait while the world moves in, in a business suit. Even Zaid is a little less sure of himself. He can ask the new questions and make new demands, but who can give him the answers? You see his hands for this year, of course, it didn't mean something very approximate. Yeah. For next year's, he'd like it as precise as possible. Well, I'm hoping that the exercise in the coming year will give us the material for yes. next year, but at yes. the moment there's nothing to go on. From their uncertainty about the new way of life, Zaid and his men go back to the desert as often as they can. The desert is still home, the place they knew before they were rich, and the only place they will really know until the day they die. In the desert for a day or a week or a month, they can go back to their old and simpler ways, to a genuine sense of comradeship that the modern world leaves no time for. There are no budgets and civil servants here, no plans, no figures, no complication, no closed office doors. There's the sky, the heat, the emptiness, and the infinity of time that they've always understood. Out here, they can all be sure of themselves again. They can relax and be men again. Or perhaps, being just only men, the they can just be boys. Even Zaid, the ruler, can let his hair down here and be one of the boys fighting a mock battle with his secretary. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, we learn together. Today we are going to continue with our previous video, History of City Abu Dhabi, UAE. On trips like this, the desert is an escape, a recovery of innocence, a return to Eden. But like all escapes, it's also an illusion. The innocence is lost and will never be recaptured because the old Arabia of isolation, hardship and tribal war in which it flourished has been swept into the world at last. The unknown land has been more than just discovered. It's been uncovered in the past 10 or 20 years and dragged naked into everybody's sight. <laughs> Of course, this doesn't mean that the old Arabia has disappeared in the space of the last few years. It's still a hard land that breeds a hard people. Tough individuals like Zaid and his men, and some of them still fighting a rearguard action against the assaults of the modern world. All the same, in the end, the 20th century brooks no defaulters. Here in Arabia, one of the last of the lonely lands is surrendering its old independence. From now on, its people will have to face, like the rest of us, the infinite hopes, possibilities, and disillusionments of the modern, universal world. Farewell, Arabia. This was a transition which made from rags to riches of how Abu Dhabi has turned out to be. So this was the video guys. I hope you have enjoyed this video. This video has teach us many new things about the transition of Abu Dhabi. Uh, in this video, 
I have learned so many new things about the country, about the city of Abu Dhabi. Uh, just like this video, I would like to continue to upload my rest of the videos for other regions. Hope you will enjoy. See you next time.